Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted my Imperial Navy Breacher. I chose the Navis Axe Jack for this video. I think he's got a great pose, and we're going to cover most of the elements that all of the models will have. So in this video, I'll go through exactly how I painted him up using contrast paints and a little bit of the traditional method too. I'll be going through all the paints as we work through the video, but I'll also put a list down below and a link to my sponsor, Firestorm Games. And if you follow that link, you can save up to 20% on your paints and all your hobby products too. And they've sent me a code to share with you where you can save an additional 5% on those prices. So that's really cool. I'll put the link and the code down in the description. And so if you follow that, enter the code at checkout, you can save a bit of extra money. Right, let's get started. So here's my model, and now I primed this in black, and it looks like a navy blue here, but it was black prime with the airbrush, and then from the top down I did a zenital prime with white, but I didn't do it really thick, I did it quite thin, and that's given this kind of navy look almost. And this is gonna be great with the first paint now, Talisar Blue Contrast. So I'm gonna use this contrast paint over all the material. So I'm looking at the cloak as it comes down here, or the jacket, and then we'll do parts of the sleeves and then parts of the legs and the trousers too. And it's just gonna be one coat, nice and even. And you can see here, I'm not completely flooding the model. And we're gonna get some of that black coming through, some of the white from the Zenital Prime coming through, and that's just gonna uh, give us an idea of highlights and also shade. So it's gonna work really nicely. And there we go, that's all there is to it, nice and easy. One coat is all we need. You can see here it's a little bit brighter from the top and darker from the bottom. Now it's on to Abaddon Black, the base paint, and I'm going to paint the top of the helmet in this solid black colour, and then we'll be using some silver on that later on, but just one nice base coat. So really I'm just going through all the main colours now, picking out the sections of the model and blocking in those colours. And here you can see we've got some other black bits to do as well. There's a little hose here attached to the tank. So I'm just going to give that a nice coat. Then there's the sidearm. So I'm just going to cover the whole thing, the weapon and the holster as well. Just give that a coat of black. And I've used a wet palette for this and I've put a bit of water into the paint as well. So it's nice and easy to apply. You get a lot more control that way. So I definitely recommend getting a wet palette for all these bases and layer paints. Then I went on to base Celesta Grey. This has got a slight blue tint to it. And then I'm going to go and block in the visor part of the helmet here. So I'm just taking my time. I did make a little bit of mistake and went over the black. But it's no problem. Once it's dried, you can just go with back with, to the black and then touch up any mistakes you make. No problem at all. Now it's base lead belcher, and I'm going to use this to paint over every part of the model that has any metal. Now it doesn't matter what colour we're going to finish the metal, this will be the base. And we're going to go over it with contrast paints later on to give a really nice effect and then finally highlight it. But first of all, we're going to block in all those colours. Take your time. If you do go over some of the sections you've already painted in blue, then you know, you're going to have to go back and just go over that with the Talisar blue again. You might get away with it or you might have to go back down to black and then back up with the Talisar blue. And then I painted that silver on part of the weapon, the handle and the muzzle and then just working my way through all the armour, the tank and every other part of the model that's made of metal. I really like using the technique of lead belcher and then contrast paints. I think it works great. So really easy and quick to do. And then with the gloves, I thought I'm just going to paint all of those metal. So you could do the hands a different colour, but I went for all metal. Then once that dried, I took some Null Oil, this is going to be the shade, and I went over all the parts of the metal that we've painted that I want to keep silver. So just work that in, not too much, we're not flooding it, we're not going crazy. And this shade is going to do all the work for us, bringing out the detail of the model, so that's awesome. And I'm just leaving out the areas that I know I'm going to paint a different colour later on. But with the weapon, I went over the whole part and the holster. And also with the boots, I'm going to mix up two different colours. So I'm just filling in that bit that you can see there, and then going around the base as well, but then leaving the rest of it ready for the next paint. So... While I had the paint out, I also went over the visor. Again, that's going to bring the detail out too. 
Then I took some contrast gillum and flesh, make sure that null and all is dry, and then I'm going to use gillum and flesh on the other parts of the metal. Now this is great for giving a kind of bronze aged look and works really nicely. What I'm not doing is putting too much on my brush and I'm not giving a complete coat all over the areas I want to paint. I don't mind if I miss little dots here and there because that's all going to add to the effect. But I try and put a little bit of extra paint on the more detailed parts with more texture. Then when that dried, I got some layer white scar, a very small brush, probably too small here. And I'm just trying to do some edge or highlighting all around the visor. So this is something I'm really working on, trying to get better at. And it took me a while. It looked a little bit messy. So I, I spent a little bit of time going over these lines with a few coats. But this is the general idea. I'm just picking out all the main lines like this and just working my way, moving the model rather than myself so I've got more control and just building up those lines. Then when that was dry, I took some Contrast Blood Angels Red and then with that small brush again, I'm going to paint in the visor. You'll need a steady hand for this part and I'm just starting from one side, filling in most of it but making sure I get one edge, then flipping the model to get the other edge so I can work the bristles right in there and get it in as close as possible. Just make it as easy as I can for myself so I can brace myself on the table and have a steady hand as possible. But again, a lot of practice needed to get all this right. So it's great to move away from the visor and onto some of the other pipes. And I think using the red on these is really nice to break up that blue and the metal, just adding that other color in works nicely. Once everything's dry, I took some layer storm host silver, and then I took this really small army painter, small dry brush. Some storm host silver is really bright, or the brightest I've got at least. I've got to try some more. Thanks for your recommends in the previous video. I'm going to try out some different metallic paints for sure, so I really appreciate that. But here I'm just working that in, getting as much as I can off the bristles, and then I'm going to take my time going over all the metal work and just really bringing out all the texture of the model, going over the back. And this will break up that bronze look a little bit, add the highlights and just give it the metal almost a bit more texture to it. So that's going to work really nicely. Then on the helmet, you've got the little emblem there. So I'm just going over that to bring that out and also the edges of the helmet too. And here you can see that highlight has really brought out more of the details and it's changed up that metal work and made the two different coloured metals work together nicely, I think. Then I thought, let's take some Fenrisian grey and do this like banding around the edge of the jacket. I was just going to leave it without this, but I thought, you know what, it does need something else. So I had a look at what paints I had that best match the images from the Into the Dark book and the Fenrisian grey looked perfect. So really happy with how this turned out and glad I did this extra step. Now, again, I'm watering this down using my wet palette and I did a couple of coats on this, moving that model so it makes it nice and easy. So I always try and keep my hands in almost the same position. Sometimes I'm maneuvering around the camera, which is a bit tricky, but there we go. So yeah, I'm really happy with how I got the lines nice and neat, but the little groove on the model really helps with that. Now it's time for the base, so I took some contrast snake bite leather. I think this matches the board really nicely. So I'm just going to give that coat over the base as it is. I'm not worried about the colour that I've left underneath from priming or any spots of paint that have gone on it. That's all going to be fine. And so one nice coat, again, not a huge amount of this paint. And then once that dried, back to lead belcher and we'll do a dry brush on the edges, trying to catch all those textures and then just bring out all the details of the base there. And I used a Necromunda base for this. I thought that would fit in nicely. And so work up my round, taking my time, not going too crazy, just enough to break up that solid brown colour. I thought I'd use the Dark Oak Army Painter for the rim. And as I started going around, I just didn't like the look of it. It didn't really work well with the top. It almost took away from it. And so I felt black might be a better option. So I grabbed the Abaddon back base paint and then I went to town giving that two coats all the way around and I was much happier with the result from the black. It definitely suited the colours I've used and it allowed all that brown and the metal work of the base to come through a lot more. And that's it. That's the Imperial Navy Breacher Navis Axe Jack finished and ready for battle. So I was really happy with how he came out and I'll be using the same techniques on the rest of the Navy Breachers, but I'm going to do them as a batch paint. So I'll do them all in one go. But this was the first one I did just to make sure I got the paint recipes correct. 
You can see here I'm zooming in on that head because I did struggle a little bit with that white. The reds come over a little bit, which you can't notice until you go in really close. But you can see I put a bit of extra white on than you saw earlier in the video. So I needed a few layers and I was more happy with how that come out with more of a solid white with little bits of the grey coming through. And even though in the picture that little bit of red's coming over, once it's on the tabletop or even just holding it a foot away, you can't even see it. So overall, really happy with how it came out. And I hope this has been helpful helpful to you and you've got some tips. I think using lead belcher with contrast paints over the top is a nice quick easy way to get your models ready for battle as fast as you can with some nice effects and then having the highlight over the top is really cool. But Gilliam and Flesh to get that nice bronze effect is one of my favourites. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed all the Kill Team videos I've been putting out recently and thanks so much for following along, adding your comments. I love reading the comments and so always great to hear your tips and recommends too. So thanks so much for that. But if you liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Game. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.